Here we go, my party people. So we have a question here and it reads, how long will it take for the two pipes working together to fill the pool? All right, so here's the thing, my party people. We're taking a look here. And again, reading the question first is the one thing you always wanna start with because it's gonna allow you to potentially see what kind of problem you're dealing with. And if anything, you at least know what you're supposed to be ending up at, like what information you wanna find. So if you check here again, how long, so right there, how long? So what does that tell us? That's time. We're looking for time. And then it says over here, will it take for those two pipes again, working together? So that is combined work to fill the pool. So again, time working together. Whenever you see that the question's asking about time and working together, and that's like the theme of the problem, boom, that's combined work. That is combined work. Again, specifically, specifically when you're asked about time working together. Because you can have a problem that it asks about the total work done together. And in those, you just add. Like if they say, oh, I made 10 cookies. My friend made 12 cookies. Working together, how many cookies did we make? Yeah, there, you would just add them. Because you're just talking about amounts of things. But whenever you're talking about time, you're not going to add. Because, think about it like this, if I take an hour to do something and you take, let's go ahead and say, an hour to do something, well, if I find out how much time it takes working together, one plus one, two hours? If I take an hour by myself, why would it take two hours working with someone else? So that's how you know you're dealing with a combined work word problem. So let's go ahead and get to it here. So again, this is combined work, a combined work word problem, and the way we're going to handle these are by using the formula. The formula for combined work is gonna be one over A plus one over B equals one over T. And so let me break this down for you. That way in the problems coming up after this, you know, we can potentially see that formula, how it's used and have a good time. So remember that A is basically gonna be the amount of time it takes for the first person or thing working by itself. Hey, hey, before we get to crushing this problem, just wanted to remind you about my ASVAB All Access program. So if you have test anxiety, if you blank out on word problems, if you're frustrated and can't keep a solid study schedule, then this program is there to support you. Long story short, you're going to be able to text me whenever you need help. You get all of the classes and the recordings so you can work around your schedule whenever you need to. On top of that, you're going to get access to over 2,000 practice problems that let you learn from every mistake by watching video solutions to those math questions. Not like a textbook where you have to figure it out on your own. On top of that, there are way more features like practice tests, study guides, flashcard sets, all that good stuff. So go ahead, either text me or check out the link either somewhere here in this video or in the description. That way you can keep raising your score and get the job you want because that's what you're here for at the end of the day. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Check out the All Access program and sign up and then keep going watching this video so you can keep crushing it. I'll see you there. So here, one pipe six hours now if you're asking well we have a here and that's six why do we have one over a well the thing is what this represents here what this represents this whole equation this whole equation what it represents is the work done in one hour and here's why this makes sense if uh if the pipe here this first pipe takes six hours well, one over six, that's what I'm gonna plug in here. One over six represents how much of the work it gets done in one hour. Cause think about it. If I have six hours, every hour, I'm doing one sixth of the work. Hour one, hour two, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six out of six. The whole job is done. So in six hours, the whole job is done. In one hour, one sixth of the job is done. And so then if we're adding with the other here, the B, what that means, again, that's the amount of time it takes for the other object or other person. And so in this case, that's nine hours. So in one hour, we get one ninth of the work done. Is that starting to make a little bit of sense there? Again, again, you use one over A and one over B because that's the amount of work you get done in one hour. And if you combine them together, Let's go ahead and say it takes T hours working together. What that's gonna mean is, hey, in one hour, you get one over T of the job done. So if it's three hours, in one hour, 
you get one third of the job done together. So I hope this makes a little bit of sense here. Again, we have plenty of problems here. I want to make sure that you understand this nice and fluidly. That way you can build that confidence and keep raising that score. So with that said, the way to do this is once you plug everything in, solve and you're done. So we have fractions here, obviously not the funnest thing in the world, but remember to solve an equation, especially when they include fractions, see if you can add the fractions in any way. And here we can, but first we do have to have the same denominator. If we don't have the same denominator, then we can't add these fractions. So we're gonna ask ourselves, what is the least common denominator? Now, if this is something that you're not quite comfortable with, then please go into a lesson or a section on fractions on how to add and subtract fractions before you come back here. Because this is a slightly more complicated topic, I don't want you to lose interest here because something like this is tough. But again, here we're gonna find the least common denominator between six and nine. And the way you do that is really gonna be asking yourselves, hey, what number do six and nine both go into? Six goes into six, 12, 18, and that seems pretty familiar to me because nine can also go into 18. Nine, nine times two is 18. So right there, I know that 18 is the smallest number that they both go into. Now, if you ask me, well, what if I use 36? What if I use 54? Completely fine, completely fine. Just know that you might have to do a little more work at the end of the problem. But either way, it's completely fine. We found out that it's 18. Let's go ahead with that one. And we're gonna get this done. So how do I get to 18 from six? Well, that'll be a multiplying by three. And remember, whatever you do to the denominator, you gotta do to the top. So with that said, boom, three over three. Remember, by doing the three on top and the bottom, it doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just changes the way it looks so we can actually add it together. And so with that, what about the nine? Well, the nine we will multiply by two on the top and bottom because nine times two is 18. Remember, the goal is to get to 18 for both of them. So that way we have the same denominator and we can now add. So one times three, that's gonna be three over 18. One times two, that's gonna be two over 18. And that's still gonna be the one over T. So with that said, we can add these together now and we're gonna receive five over 18 equals one over T. So we're looking at this now and we're like, okay, cool. We're getting really close to solving for T, right? We're getting really close. That's the time it's gonna take them together. So one way that people like to do this is gonna be using cross multiplication and division, kind of treating it like a proportion. You're absolutely allowed to do that. And if you do that, you'll get 5t equals 18. And then you can just divide by five on both sides to get t equals 18 over five. You're perfectly allowed to do that. But another way you can do this is actually gonna be, you know, a little shorter here. You can just take a look here and say, hey, uh, if I flip this or took the reciprocal, I can get t on top and one on bottom. But what's t divided by one? That's just gonna be t. I can erase the one, that's just t. Again, anything divided by one is itself, right? So what you can do here is actually just flip both sides. Flip both fractions and you're good. Because once you do that, you're gonna get 18 over five when you flip this side and that's gonna equal t over one, which again, anything divided by one is itself. And so you just have t there. And so now there it is, there's the time. Just like we saw earlier, same thing. That's 18 over five hours. Because again, these were in hours, hours. So the answer is gonna be in hours. So we have that going on and cool. 18 over five hours is the answer, but the problem is that you're looking here and you're saying, uh, where does it say 18 over five hours, right? So this is where we have to go ahead and do a little more work. We're gonna have to turn those hours into hours and minutes. And so just follow along while I do it. That way you can completely understand how to finish off the problem. But remember, if you were able to just set it up right here, you already know what's going on. Now it's just a matter of actually solving the equation by using adding fractions, you know, using those rules. And then we have to convert it to hours and minutes from just hours. So there's extracurricular stuff going on. But long story short, if you know how to set it up, you know how to combine fractions, solve equations, and convert units. That's why this is complicated, but if you can do those four things, you're gonna be in a good position. So with that said, let's go ahead here, erase all of this, and erase all of that. So we're gonna turn 18 over five hours into hours and minutes. The one way we can do this is gonna be the following way. Let's turn this into a mixed number, 
And by turning it into a mixed number, you'll see how many whole hours we have. Here's what I mean. Let's zoom in. 18 divided by 5. How many times does 18 get divided by 5? Three times. Three times. Because 5 goes into 18 three times. And now what's left over? What's the remainder? So what we're doing here is we're turning this into a mixed number. So 5 goes into 18 three times. But what's the remainder? So we know that 5 times 3 equals 15. But we still have 3 to go to get to 18. So 15 to get to 18, you still have 3 left. And so the remainder is going to be 3 over 5. And so again, if you don't know how to convert between improper and mixed numbers, this is where you want to take a pause and say, hey, I need to work on that first before coming back here. Seriously, I want you to be interested in this and I don't want you to get confused. But long story short here, here we are. We have 3 and 3 fifths and that means 3 hours. So we use black here. 3 hours and 3 fifths hours. Again, they're still both in hours. They're still both in hours. But the reason that I separated it is because I have a whole number of hours here. So I know that one of my answers is either or it's either going to be A or B. There is no way that it can be C or D simply because that uses four hours. So now the only thing is, hey, what is three over five hours? What is that going to be? Is that 36 minutes or is that going to be 45 minutes? Which one is that? And so the question you're going to ask yourself here is how do I convert hours into minutes? The way that I'll do that is going to be by multiplying by 60 because every hour is 60 minutes. And so to get that done, my party people, there we are. Every hour is 60 minutes. So I'll take my three over five. I'll multiply that by 60, which is the same thing as saying 60 over one, right? Again, any number is the same thing divided by one. So 60 is 60 divided by one. It helps us see this a little easier because now we can go ahead and multiply nice and easy. Now, if you've watched my videos on multiplying fractions, remember that I can show you a little trick here to deal with smaller numbers. Because a lot of the times, what we'll do is we'll multiply straight across and then simplify at the end. But remember that one thing I teach is you can simplify first. And what do I mean by that? Notice that 60 and 5 are both divisible by 5. I can simplify that right now because we have one on top, one on bottom. They're going to get divided. 60 divided by 5, what's that going to be? That's 12. And that's 1. If I divide both of them by 5, I can simplify before I multiply, making my life so much easier because I can do now 3 times 12, which is going to be 36. 1 times 1, 1. So this is essentially just going to be 36. But remember, we were converting. We multiplied by 60 to turn it into minutes. And that's where we are, my party people. That's where we are. A is the answer, three hours and 36 minutes, and we're all good. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out. Let's get to it. I'll see you there.